Welcome, everybody. Today, we're going to look at another defining moment in the life of Peter, and this moment is huge. It is the battle that we'll all face between fear and faith. Have you ever been so afraid that you didn't know what to do? When I was 10 years old and my brother was 12, my parents left us home alone for the first time. My parents had gone out with some friends, and they felt like we were now old enough to hold down the fort on our own. My brother and I spent the evening playing ball outside until it got dark, and then we proceeded in the house to play some more in our bedroom. And everything was fine until we heard a strange noise coming from the kitchen. It sounded like someone was in the house, and they were getting a drink of water. My brother said, did you hear that? I said, yeah. He said, he said what, what, do you, what do you think that was? I, I said, I don't know, but it sounded like somebody was getting a drink of water in our house. My brother said, no one comes into our house and gets a drink of water without asking. Todd, I want you to go out there and see who it is. Thanks, Jeff. I said, no way. You're older than me. Aren't you supposed to be the one to protect me? We sat in that room frozen for what seemed like hours. My brother finally said, we can't just stay back here and let somebody get free drinks of water and take our stuff. We got to do something about this. At that, we gathered our courage. We grabbed our bows and our arrows, the only weapons that we had, and we headed out to the hallway. My brother, of course, made me go first. Slowly, step by step, we walked, trying not to make a sound. We got about halfway down the hall, and we heard the sound again. We immediately panicked and ran to the bathroom. I guarded one bathroom door, and my brother guarded the other one. We sat in the bathroom for, I think, about two more hours. Finally, my parents came home, and needless to say, they were surprised to find my brother and myself in the bathroom together with our bows and arrows. My dad said, what are you doing in here? We said, Dad, we think someone was in our house tonight getting free drinks of water and stealing our stuff. We began to look around the house to see if there was anything missing when some, suddenly we heard the sound again. I said, did you hear it? There it was. My dad looked at me and said, Todd, what you heard wasn't a burglar stealing free drinks of water, but the ice machine making ice. When we sat in that bathroom, every scenario went through our minds. Uh, we were worrying ourselves sick over an ice machine. I wonder how many of us have done the exact same thing. We get scared a lot, don't we? Every day, the news has a new fear for us, doesn't it? Uh, we fear getting this virus, uh, when we're going to go back to work, going back to work, going to the store. But that isn't all that we're fearful about. We fear what everyone thinks, so we go along with the crowd. For fear of staying out, we wear what everyone else wears. For fear of sleeping alone, we sleep with anyone. And for fear of not being loved, we search for love in all the wrong places. The battle that rages inside of you and me will always be the battle between fear and faith. So let's take a look at this defining moment in Peter's life. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side where he dismissed the crowd. And after he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When the evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come on. Then Peter got down the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. The disciples had just finished an incredible day with Jesus. They've just witnessed him feeding about fifteen to 20,000 people with nothing more than five small loaves of bread and two little fish. They're fist pumping, belly bumping, high fiving. This is before social distancing. And they're all thinking there's nothing that Jesus can't do. The Bible says Jesus immediately made the disciples get in the boat. Notice the Bible said he had, he had to make the disciples get in the boat. A, a better translation of the word would be forced. He forced them to get in the boat. What the Bible's trying to say is the disciples didn't want to get in the boat. And there could be a lot of reasons for that. Maybe they wanted to stay a little bit longer and bask in all that Jesus had done. 
Maybe they saw a storm coming up over the Sea of Galilee and they wanted to stay on shore where it was safe. Peter was a fisherman, as were Andrew, James, and John. They had fished these waters many times before, and they knew a dangerous situation when they saw one. What I'm about to say might disturb you a little bit. Sometimes Jesus leads us into a storm. Sometimes Jesus will put us in a position where we're forced to face our fears and learn how to depend on him in faith. Some storms we face are there to deepen us, to strengthen us, to be the people that Jesus needs us to be. You see, Jesus is going to need his disciples to be the kind of men who are willing to take a risk and do what he asks them to do. Jesus is going to need a group of men who will be courageous, even in the midst of fear, to stand up and speak out for the kingdom of God. Jesus is going to need a group of men who will be fearless. And the only way a person gets to be fearless is they have to face their fears. They have to be brave. They have to step out in faith into the unknown. Friends, we'll never know that God is trustworthy until we've actually trusted him. We'll never know that God's all we need until he's all that we've got. Now, if we're honest, this scares us to death. When people think about facing their fears, they think about them reacting to their fears in one of two ways. They, they think about fleeing, running the opposite direction. I'm out of here. No, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going that. I'm going this way is what I'm doing. That makes sense because our survival mode kicks in, right? They also think about moving. Uh, the, secondly, we think if we move the direction God wants us to go, that we'll freeze up. This happens to a lot of people. Every weekend, people text the word sagebrush to 97,000 with every intention of following through on what they know God wants them to do. The form pops up on the screen. They gather enough courage to fill it out, and they send the form back to us. But while they wait for a pastor to call them, they start to freeze up. I'm not sure I'm ready for this. I, I, I think I need to put this off. Did you know only about 15% of the people who sit in a text to follow Jesus actually follow through? They freeze up. They come up with some excuse for why they aren't ready. They, they think about what God is asking them to do, and they just get paralyzed. Let me try to comfort those of us who freeze up or flee. Jesus forces the disciples into the boat, and Jesus goes up on the mountain, and he begins to pray. Now, the disciples are trying to get to the other side of the sea, but the wind and the waves grow more and more intense. I want you to see that Jesus never takes his eyes off of them. He can see them from where he's praying, and he sees what his disciples are enduring, and I believe he was praying for them. And did you know that Jesus prays for you too? Romans 8.34 says that Jesus is at the right hand of God, and he intercedes for us. He's talking to God about you right now. He's praying for your courage. He's praying for your faith. He's praying for that heartache that you feel inside. He's praying that you would trust him and follow him and love him with all that you've got. Jesus is praying for you. Jesus wants each of us to reach our full potential. He wants us to put all of our faith and all of our trust in him. And whether we like it or not, some lessons about faith can only be learned in the midst of the storms of life. Jesus is praying for you. So take heart. Don't fear, don't fret, don't flee, and don't freeze up. Even in the midst of the storm, he's got you. He didn't bring you this far to let you fall now. Friends, that's the devotional for today. I'll see you this weekend on TV or online as we continue our series, Relationship Playbook. Have a great day.